noisy refrigerator here. Let's see if we can work this out. This one, we slide it over, slide the shelf out. We've got a couple screws in the back. Sounds like the fans rubbing. Pull it up. There's the channel. Right. Now I'm just going to kind of carefully take my pliers here. Try to slow it down. Grab it. Pull it forward. See if we can't make that a little better. These can definitely be tricky. The other way is adjusting the the mount here. Uh, an understatement at this point. This one I can unplug it, or I can. It's just a lot easier to do it live because it's hard to tell if you've actually got it without, you know. See if I push it on a little more. That's a little better. It might be almost time to change that motor out. Let's see how it is without the blades. Oh yeah, it's, it's loud even without the blades. I can try looping it. I'll do that. It might just be time for a new, uh, new deal all together, but I'll grab some spray lube and we'll try that. For now, I'll go ahead and put the blades back on. And pull it back off after. Okay, so we've got my trusty HVAC 444. Uh, this may or may not work on this one. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Pull it off. Definitely it's our motor, so it's not too expensive to replace the fan motor. Not a big deal uh, if that's needed, but let's try the uh, lube here and see what happens. Definitely helped. <laughs> Still got quite the buzz, but uh, okay. And now we'll reset our fan blades. And it's still definitely. Definitely a lot noisier than what we want. Let's see if I can adjust that a little bit. like we're going to need a new motor, but I'll let it run for a while we'll go from there. Maybe it'll work its way in. Well, let's see how it goes. I think we're going to need a new motor though. Change the motor out. No big deal. Screws back. for a new motor. But I got a couple things ahead of it, so I'll have to come back to this another day. Another moment. Maybe later today. We'll see. My shelf 
back in. How it goes. Very noisy motor. Okay, so I came back. Maybe a couple days later. But uh, everything's cold. And I'm just going to open it for a little bit to get, see if I can get it to turn on. There we go. Yeah, and it looks like we need a new fan motor. Just rumbling around it is what it is. Okay, so here's the model number, and I can actually order the same, the uh, manufacturer uh, fan motor. You can actually use a universal motor. A lot of them are uh, very similar. Even a uh, um, bathroom fan exhaust motor is, is also uh, the same uh revolutions per minute you know 1075 so no big deal but anyway uh going with the factory one probably your best bet but there's other ways too so gtk 17 gce frbs okay welcome back to country maintenance finally got my fridge fan motor in got the model number here and uh you know we attempted to repair this one but it was just too noisy so I'm just going to be showing you the repair here, and uh, let me try to get some more light on the subject. Let's see. The OEM fan motor actually costs about forty dollars. Okay, there we go. A little light probably help. And uh, let's see. In the center, we've got a couple screws, but first we need to move this rack up top. Yeah, the, uh, the rack here, just move over to one side, pull it on down and out. And uh, back of the fridge, you've got a couple screws. And we've got a couple screws on the back panel as well. And uh, for the, replacing the motor, we will actually need to. Well, maybe not. <laughs> the fridge is plugged in right now, have power, so in a second here, going to be pulling it down. Now, um, it's got a quick plug, and uh, I got my new motor here. I'll show you that here. Here's a new motor. It's got the OEM motor. And, uh, See that this one it has a little bit of play on the motor, but this one just is off its deal. So it's be much better. This one's actually a Panasonic motor. Interesting. Um, so it still hasn't kicked on. I might need to advance it. It could be in the defrost cycle. So. Let's see if we have access on this particular model. No, we do not. This one you'd have to pull down the control panel and then uh, adjust it that way. Well, you saw before that how uh, noisy our motor was, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the power and do it that way. Now, this one's on a, on a GFI, so I can just reset the GFI, and in theory, that should hit the fridge. Or we can unplug the fridge, which actually might be easier in that I don't have to reset a bunch of clocks and everything else. So just go ahead and pull this out. And we'll unplug the fridge. And that will be evident as uh, the lights inside the fridge go out. Unplugged. Just make our repair much safer. Okay. Let's see if I can get, you, get a good view. There we 
Here we go. Okay. Yeah, the question is, can we do this from the front or not? Our fan motor, or our fan blades, I should say, will just pull straight off. And uh, you can see how much that thing just rocks around. So that's not good. Nope. There we go. is right here so that's good not too difficult there we can get down in there to the quick connect right there so that's good that looks like we happened on this when it was in the defrost cycle this one's actually mounted to the back wall so that's going to be only slightly tricky and if need be we'll have to pull the ice maker and the, the other deal out but we may be able to just pull this straight out so we'll give it a shot we'll see how it goes and we can regroup, regroup after if we need to. like we're going to need to pull the two deals off the front. Let's need my flat blade. And I'm going to drop those down there because then I will have to take off the deal. side what we do is just okay I'm just going to loosen up this one without taking it all the way out and then we'll take out this one there we go working for me with the camera. Not cooperating. I'm just gonna put this down here for light. And got that loosened up and we can turn it now. We've left the ground wire connected. We may actually need to take the whole thing apart here. And we've got to be careful that we don't drop that screw. Just like the other side. There it is. Okay. And now we can turn this. And then we can pull our motor out in theory. I may have to uh, take the screw out here. So, there we go. There's our motor. We'll pop that out. Easy enough. And then there's our quick connect. separate the tabs on each side there we go and it went in this way so we can just match those up on that side that's pretty straightforward and we're going to put this through our mount here so there's our mount and we're going to loop this in and the whole key is going to be not to drop it. So 
So I think before I do anything, plug my disconnect. Yeah, it would have been nice of them to give a, just a touch more room on the disconnect, but you know, you can't always have things nice, can you? But a little tiny more room would have meant we don't have to fight with it so much. And it's sharp in there, let me tell you. you have to take the back off which is nothing wrong with that but why there we go a little bit at the quick plug to make sure we're getting it lined up right. The square ends towards the back right now. And that's probably what's throwing me off. Square towards the back. New motor. There we go. And it's clipped in. Okay. And the motor mount goes right towards the back. Right there. And uh, We'll need to configure this right here. So we're gonna need to go in with this. And we just don't wanna drop this. That's the key part. Seated in the back mount and the front mount, the little rubber grommets. And I can go ahead and set this screw. Okay, and we also need our ground wire once we mount the other side, but we'll get the front part mounted first. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. That. And now we'll line up our holes with our mount bracket. Tighten this. And now we're ready for the back mounts. Now this is the one we do not want to drop. And I'll start with this side first because it'll make get in the other side that has the uh, feel a little bit easier. Wow. Yep, tricky, tricky. tricky. There it is. Okay. Next one we're going to have the ground wire, which actually will probably help us out in that we can put it through the ground wire and kind of use that to position it in theory. Position and hold. Bring it on over. Definitely be better to probably take off the back panel and do this. But did it carefully, got it done. All right, and we're in. A little crazy, but we can rotate our motor, make sure it spins good. And now we'll put our motor on nice and careful. Okay, we're on. Now we're ready to plug it in. Nice, nice quiet fan. So now we just got to put everything together. That part went good. Thank <laughs> you. 
go. Easy enough. We got our new fan motor. I spin back in. Clean things up a bit and we're all set. Nice quiet, nice quiet fan motor. Yay! Than the noisy one that was in there before. We're all set. Thanks for watching Kung Fu Maintenance. That's changing up. Fan on a GE fridge. Refrigerator. Most other fans are the same way. You know, you could, it's a lot easier if you go ahead and pull off the back panel screws, pull it forward. It's got a disconnect usually up top here. You pull that disconnect and then you'll be able to change the fan motor a little easier. Uh, but that was one way you can get it done. <laughs> There's always more than one way to get it done. And sometimes the easy way isn't always the easy way, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's easier just to, to do it the longer way. But, uh, anyway, that's changing out the fridge motor. You get the idea. Usually quick plugs. If it didn't have quick plugs, then you'd have to make your connections a different way, but no big deal. Thanks for watching. Come to Maintenance. Over now.